Okay, let's look at this question. Okay, here, uh, this is the given part. So you already have y equal to sin inverse of x the whole square. And we're supposed to prove this. Now, whenever you come across any question, the first thing you should do is just look at what you want to prove. That's the first very important part. Okay, if I see here, I see some y of n and y of n plus 1 and n plus 2. Basically, this is nth derivative. So yes, I'm talking about a question of successive differentiation where I have something given, I want to prove it. So basically, to get y n, I have to go for nth derivative. But now, when you see the question, you, do you also see that it is y of n plus 2 and y of n plus 1? Try to observe these things well, so that it gives you a hint. How will you get y of n plus 1 anyways? For y of n plus 1, you need to do the first derivative and take the nth derivative. Understand why you do first differentiation, you get y1. And you take nth differentiation, you get y n plus 1. That's how I should get y of n plus 1. Okay, so let's start working with the problem. We have y is equal to sine inverse of x the whole square. So the first thing I'm going to do is, now this is my hint here. What I'm going to do is differentiate once. So differentiate y once. If I differentiate y once, I will get y1. That's basically dy by dx. dy by dx is the derivative of this is going to be 2 sine inverse of x. And then the chain rule will apply. Sine inverse of x, the derivative of sine inverse of x is going to be root of 1 upon root of 1 minus x squared. So I got y1. Alright, so once I get y1, now the next step is, ideally I should square this. One reason is I don't like root, I want to reduce root. And you know, the 1 minus x square is a better term than root of that. So let us square this. And by the way, do you see that when I square sine inverse of x, that's just y. So if I square here, I will get on the other side, this will be y1 square. And let me take, take the square of this and take it on the other side. It is 1 minus x square. And the root is gone. I squared it. I took it on the other side. And it is equal to 4 sine inverse of x squared. Let me write that down as y. So I got this nice little equation here. But now so far, I have only y1. Let me not do the end differentiation right away. Because that will give me y of n plus 1. But I actually also want y of n plus 2. So for that, let me differentiate it again. So differentiate again only once. So differentiation of this is going to be u into v formula. So here this is 1 minus x square as it is. Derivative of y1 square will be 2y1. And the chain rule will give me y2 as well. I hope you get that part. Okay, so u v dash plus y1 square as it is. And derivative of 1 minus x square is minus 2x. So basically, u into v rule applied to this part and I got this on the left hand side. And the right hand side is going to be just 4. Derivative of y is y1. Right? So I got this expression. Now if you observe closely, you see that 2y1 is common. It, it, can I cancel it out? Yes, I think so. So since 2y1 is a common factor in every term, I should rather divide this entire equation by 2y1. So if I divide this by 2y1, okay, what I end up getting is, uh, this is 1 minus x square, 2y1 is cancelled out, only y2 will remain. And then the next one is going to be minus x, 2y1 is gone, so I've got 1y1 going on here. And then next is this one here, that's going to be just 2. And, and you should be happy because we actually want 0 on the right hand side. So now any more differentiation, I'm going to get 0 here. That's a good thing. Alright, so once, once that happens, okay, so I've got y1, I've got y2, do you see that? So now if I take nth derivative, this is going to give me y1 plus n. And this is going to give me y2 plus n. And that's exactly what I want to get here to prove what I'm asked to prove. Okay, so uh, let us differentiate n time. Differentiate n times. So if I differentiate this n times, okay, now here, well, I need to use the Leibniz rule. Differentiate n times by Leibniz rule. So by the Leibniz rule here, well, we have to, let me write down that Leibniz rule for you. Leibniz rule is like this, integration of UB, 
Okay, uh, so if you have y is equal to u into v, y n is u n the derivative, that's u n, and v as it is. You remember the first term, it is n the derivative of u, and v term remains as it is. Okay, so the next term here is going to be nc1. Now, the technique here is that you have u n already. Just reduce the derivative of u n, so you do u n minus 1, that's 1 less. And differentiate v1, so I get v1. And so on and so forth. So next term is going to be obviously n c2. And u n minus 1 you reduce further, or and reduce it further. So this is u n minus 2. And increase the derivative of v, so it is going to be v2. You keep doing that forever. It should not be ideally forever. So here you have to just apply one simple rule or just be careful here. Be careful that your V, the V should be such that if you keep differentiating V, it should eventually become zero. So now what happens is here, uh, let us take this as V. Does that make sense? Yes, if I make this as V, if I keep differentiating, Eventually that v will become 0, like 1 minus x squared, the first derivative will be minus 2x, the second derivative will be minus 2, and the third derivative is 0. That's how I, you know, don't get infinite terms. So I'm going to use Leibniz rule over here. That's v, this is u. Okay, so now uh, let's apply Leibniz rule for the first term. Now I'm using Leibniz on this term. Okay, the first uh, un is n the derivative of y2, so it is y n plus 2. And v as it is. So I've got 1 minus x square as it is. Now next is nc1. I'm writing the second term. Y n plus 2, you reduce the number of derivatives. So if it is y n plus 2, 1 less would be y n plus 1. And then derivative of this is going to be minus 2x. Then next is nc2. Reduce y n plus 1 further. So that is just y n, 1 less. And differentiate this again, so you're going to get minus 2. And I hope you understand, the next term is 0. Well, I, I sorted this first bracket out. Well, I have to use the same Leibniz theorem on this bracket here. So let's do that, minus. Well, I hope you can guess that this has to be v, and this has to be, this has to be u, and this has to be v. So first term will be, un, the nth derivative of y1 is y n plus 1 and x as it is. Next is nc1, reduce the derivative on this one, y n plus 1 will become just y n and derivative of x is going to be 1 and the next term is going to be 0. Why this is going to be 0? But because you, if you differentiate 1 again, it's going to be 0, right? And on the right hand side, you got 0 because it's two differentiated the derivative is straight going to be 0. The derivative of constant is always 0. Alright, so I got this expression here. Now I just have to do a little bit of simplification. And that is nc1 is just n. And nc2 is n, n minus 1 upon 2. And here this nc1 is n. And now, well let's rewrite the whole equation. So I've got one term of y n plus 2, exactly that, that is exactly what I want, that's a good thing. Alright, so I've, I've actually got the first term that I wanted. So the first one here is 1 minus x square y n plus 2, that's the first term, this one here. And for y n plus 1, this is minus 2 x n y n plus 1, that's this term here. Let me write down the terms here. And then plus, no this is minus, that 2 will cancel out and this is n square minus n and then this still there is a bracket, y n, this term here. Now the next term is this one which is minus x y n plus 1 and the last term here is going to be plus n y n and then that is all equal to 0. So now I just have to segregate terms properly, the first term is good, second term here I'll take minus x out, so I get this 2n plus 1, now that's, that's exactly what I want. So 1 minus x square, y n plus 2, minus 2n plus 1, x y n plus 1, and the next is 
that n, this n and this n will cancel out and I'll get minus n square yn that is equal to 0 and this is n's proved. So we are able to prove the question. So uh, let's take a quick recap here. This is what is given to you and you're supposed to prove this. Now, whenever you get a question like this of prove that nature, you should actually pick up hints from what is asked. Now, by looking at the question, I got one idea that I clearly want y n, n plus 1, n plus 2. Well, y n plus 2 is possible when I differentiate y twice and then take the nth derivative. That's how it should be done. So, well, here is the procedure. I just keep this pick for your reference later on. Just have a look at it. Happy learning. Bye-bye.